Decker. I'm a registered nurse, and this is Nursing Analysis. Today, we focus on pharmacology and the cardiac system, specifically on beta blockers, also known as adrenergic antagonists, which relates to the ability to block sympathetic adrenergic effects on the receptors of organs in our body. We must remember from previous videos, the nervous system is made up of two branches, the peripheral and the central. The central nervous system controls the brain and the spinal cord. We will discuss this system in more detail in future videos. The peripheral nervous system contains the autonomic nervous system which includes both sympathetic and parasympathetic effects on body systems. The sympathetic can be explained as our fight or flight system, whereas the parasympathetic is known as the rest and digest system. The sympathetic utilizes adrenaline producing chemicals known as catecholamines. They are epinephrine and norepinephrine. These chemicals produce adrenergic effects on the receptors of our organs. They can increase the heart rate, blood pressure, contractility, and oxygen demands on the heart. In the lungs, they cause vasodilation, and in the liver, they are responsible for the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. And in the kidneys, they target the juxtaglomerular cells to produce renin, which eventually activates a hormone on the adrenal glands to release aldosterone which increases sodium levels and ultimately increases the blood pressure. If you watched my video on receptors on both alpha-1 and alpha-2 and beta-1 and beta-2, it explains the effects at all of these receptors including the three major catecholamines. Today, we will mainly discuss beta-1 and beta-2 receptors as beta blockers primarily affect only these receptors. It is important to mention there are dual receptor beta blockers such as carvedilol, which is also known as Coreg, and labetalol, which is also known as Trandate. These medications act not only on beta receptors, but they also act on alpha-1 receptors by design as to work on the heart and the vessels in unison, which is shown to be more therapeutic. So let's first talk about where beta receptors are found. Beta-1 receptors are found in the nodal tissue and cardiac myocyte in the heart. Beta-1 receptors are also found in the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidneys. When talking about the effects on the heart, there are three terms used to describe either a positive or increased effect or a negative or decreased effect on the conduction contractility, and rate of the heart. The three terms are dromotropin, which affects atrioventricular conduction, inotropic, which affects heart contractility, and chronotropic, which affects heart rate. This means the beta-1 receptors in the nodal tissue have a dromotropic effect. The cardio Cardiac myocyte has an inotropic effect and together they can regulate the heart rate or the chronotropic effect. Beta-2 
receptors are found in the bronchioles and when stimulate cause bronchodilation. They are also found in the GI system and in the, the vascular smooth muscle. They are also found in the ciliary body of the eye and also in the uterus which if stimulated can lead to inhibition of labor by decreasing contractions. They are also located in the pancreas which when stimulated can lead to an increase in insulin release. So now that we have a basic understanding of the receptors and the sympathetic adrenergic actions that happen when they are stimulated, we will now discuss the actions of the beta blockers. This action is known as an adrenergic antagonist effect, which is related to its blocking capabilities. There are two main types of beta blockers. There is selective and non-selective. Selective beta blockers only act on beta-1 receptors. So this includes the heart and kidneys. They are termed as cardio-selective. They can also slow the atrioventricular conduction speed in the internodal cells, which is a negative dromotropic effect. They can slow the force of the heart's contraction, which is a negative inotropic effect, and they can reduce the demand for oxygen. Selective type beta blockers work in the kidneys on the juxtaglomerular cells by inhibiting the release of renin, which prevents elevation of blood pressure. They also work in the kidneys by preventing excretion of calcium and blocking stress hormones which can have protective effects on our bones. Now, let's talk about the adverse effects of the selective beta blockers and some nursing interventions. One adverse effect, of course, would be bradycardia which is a heart rate below 60 beats per minute. We must monitor the pulse as this negative chronotropic effect would signal us to hold the medication and notify the MD. Decreased cardiac output can also be noted as an adverse effect. Doses should be started slow and increased slowly until the desired level is reached. Patients with heart failure require special attention and we will watch for signs and symptoms such as shortness of breath, edema, jugular vein distension, and fatigue, which are the prominent indicators of worsening heart failure. A baseline EKG should be attained as beta blockers can cause an atrioventricular heart block. We must also remember the myocardium becomes sensitized to catecholamines with long-term use, which can cause a rebound effect. So never stop taking beta blockers abruptly. Medication should be decreased one to two weeks before fully stopping. Non-selective beta blockers work on both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. They work on beta-1 receptors basically in the same fashion as the selective beta blockers. The difference comes in with the blockage of beta-2 receptors. Beta-2 antagonists cause bronchoconstriction in the lungs. So non-selective beta blockers should not be given to an asthma or COPD patient. Non-selective beta-2 receptors response also stops the liver from breaking down glycogen into glucose. Non-selective beta blockers can also mask the signs of hypoglycemia. They can cause peripheral vasoconstriction 
and enhance the effects of peripheral vascular disease. Non-selective beta blockers, once again, should not be given to patients who have COPD or asthma and should also include diabetics and persons with peripheral vascular disease. Here is a list of the medications which are separated into selective and non-selective categories. So, beta blockers are used to treat hypertension, stable angina, compensated heart failure, and dysrhythmias. Non-selective beta blockers can also be used to treat intraocular pressure as in the condition of glaucoma, tremors of the muscles, anxiety, and also migraines. Beta blockers are contraindicated in patients who have atrioventricular heart block and sinus bradycardia. Non-selective beta blockers are contraindicated in patients who have asthma, bronchospasm, heart failure, diabetes, and peripheral vascular disease. We must include interactions with other medications. The calcium channel blocker, diltalazam, also known as cartazem, and verapamil, also known as kalin, can intensify the effects of beta blockers and must be used with caution. The only beta blockers that can be given by the IV route are atenolol, metaprolol, labetalol, and propanolol. This concludes our presentation. Usually about now we start our fun review but I wanted to open up to my audience during this video because your input matters to me. So what types of suggestions for topics or future videos would you like to see? Please, please leave your response in the comment section below. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share to support future videos. But wait, surely we cannot be done without providing some sort of fun. When selective, we are talking about beta-1, its effects on the heart and kidneys and how they run. Non-selective is not as protective. It can make the lungs defective from a breathing perspective. To regulate the rhythm, yes, we have spoken. We are referring to the term dromotropic. As for the strength of the contraction, we slow it down with negative inotropic reaction. We take the pulse so we will know the negative effects of the tropic chrono is not too slow. The sympathetic agonist has missed as the beta blockers resist. So note it, then quote it. You should already have wrote it. Beta blockers reduce the stressors, including the heart's conduction and its pressure. From a cardio-selective perspective, without selection, we have additional correction that can lead to defection. So use restriction for asthmatic and COPD prescriptions to avoid bronchoconstriction. And yes, I said it, protect the diabetic and do not forget it. Thank you for taking the time to watch and learn with Nursing Analysis.